गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल बिहाफ ऑफ गीतांजलि इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्निकल स्टडीज डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज वी आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग अ वेबिनार ऑन कम्युनिकेशन वाया प्रेजेंटेशन विद मिस्टर अबीन कक्कट ही इज द फाउंडर ऑफ ऑरिजिनेटिंग आइडियाज एंड ही इज द एम बी स्टूडेंट वी कैन से द परसुइंग एम बी स्टूडेंट फ्रॉम आई एम अहमदाबाद as well as he has done his btech from department of science and technology dhirubhai ambani as well as uh, recently he is doing mba he has he has uh, before our two year back he has started his own startup venture for sharing the experience and the knowledge but that is not for the monetary gain it is bec uh, because of the social interest what he has towards the society so he has started that venture and he is doing pretty well in that or the good thing is about he has delivered many these kind of expert talk to their fellow members as well as to their juniors or to many student all across the country he is he has, he has scored 99 point 81 percentage in cat examination then he went for the mba at i am ahmedabad one of the premium institute of a country and he is a versatile guy i have personally communicated through call many times with him and, and i i found that he is doing great job and he can deliver something great to the student of our engineering as well as the mbas so with this now i would like to invite mr abin to give away the expert talk of today and uh, because why we have chosen the topic communication via presentation because uh, it's has become a trend for today now everything is in online mode so the communication plays a very important role and when we are presenting something some any kind of ideas to any one whether for the interviews for job for setting up our own business or to negotiate on any deal then these kind of activities or the skills plays an important role so for that we have invited him and i think today's session will be superb and we will learn many thing from the expertise what we has what he is having or with this i invite again and we are of our institute i welcome him mr abhin and i think uh, we are ready for the talk over to you thank you so much sir uh i'll just start with my presentation i hope it's visible to everyone yes yes all set okay so just a second i think we are in the okay so the flow of the presentation mainly goes uh, this way we will first of all be talking about communication uh the more importantly what is the importance of planning before you communicate to anyone then we'll move on to the main topic that is how to design a presentation and deliver the same and since as we all know now most of the things are going to the virtual mode we will also be talking a little bit about virtual etiquette and finally we will be moving on to question and answers so before we start uh, what is the uh, what according to you will be uh, delivered today so what is your expectation from this if you can just uh, type in the chat quickly then that would be great anyone okay moving on let's start with uh, planning as uh, the importance of planning and communication so when we talk about business what is the first thing that comes to your mind business is all about results and hence planning your communication is an important aspect of this process it is the first step towards taking the towards the results that we achieve through the business one needs to analyze the situation 
and organize one's message before one starts uh, actually communicating with the audience or so over here when i say audience uh, please uh, mind that by audience i mean anyone it can be an individual it can be a group it can be a panel uh, or it can even be a gathering of over 1000 people so when we communicate or before communicating it is very important to organize your thoughts so the reason behind this is that when you organize anything it produces better results than operating on instincts and hence today we will start with importance of planning and communication and how to go about it so according to communicate according to you what exactly is communication uh if we go by the uh, definition of communication then one, one is a sender who sends a message one is the receiver who receives the message and the co connection between them the passage through which this happen is known as communication so first uh, the senders need to know the precise purpose or intention of their message so that they can communicate clearly and uh, purpose is one of the three pillars of communication that we will be discussing shortly second because the senders need the receiver to accomplish the purpose they have they must have the information about their audience in order to fulfill the purpose of the message so if i'm not aware what my audience is expecting from me or what exactly is my audience going to be like then i i won't be able to communicate clearly and the purpose will remain unfulfilled and hence the second pillar of communication that is the audience an effective communicator learns fast because the faster you gain knowledge about the purpose of your communication and the audience the better a communicator you can become we'll now delve into what are the various aspects of communication that need to be understood so the first is why understanding why means understanding the purpose of the communication why do you need to communicate in a particular situation it essentially gives you the necess the crux behind of the communication that you are going to deliver this will be the outcome that you intend to achieve through the communication in the first place communication isn't about the text but the person and hence we come to the second question who that is understanding the audience of your communication you need to understand the people sitting on the other side of the table and think from their perspective what will be they be looking for at the end of the presentation is he a vc then he may probably he may be probably interested in the numbers that is the tangible aspects is he a development officer then probably he might be uh, interested in the intangible aspects now the same thing can be the uh, can be communicated differently to two different people so let's take for an example uh, if i want to convey a startup idea and if i want to convince my father about it then probably he would be looking for the intangible aspects that is my passion my virtues why i want to do it whereas if i am giving the same presentation to an investor then the investor would like to would like to know what's it what's in it for him he might not be looking for my passion or my virtues he might be looking for numbers so over here we need to understand who the audience is before we are communicating it to anyone understanding the audience helps us achieve the purpose was that we defined earlier and hence we here we establish the connect between why and who also it might happen that we may not know everything about the audience and that's okay we only need to know as much as we it as much as it is useful to us uh, as long as we are able to communicate effectively then uh, that is enough for us to know about the audience it may happen that sometimes you are uh, addressing one or more two or more than two audiences at times so that might happen simultaneously or that might happen incongruously but we need to ensure that when we are communicating and we know that there might be more than two audiences then we need to communicate in such a way that we have something for everyone in uh, on from the audience the third pillar on which communication rests is the how choosing the correct channel is very important these days for your purpose now that uh, there are various channels that are available to us for communication be it video conferencing text email phone calls meeting in person uh, giving a powerpoint just give me a second uh, giving a powerpoint then uh, it it becomes important that you choose the correct channel for your purpose 
the choice of channel becomes uh, essential in the digital world uh, more so things with things become virtually many a times we choose a channel which someone has already chosen for us so let's take for example someone calls you and ask you a question you by default answer them on the call but and you do not think whether that uh, whether you will be able to uh, answer it better over an email or a text message uh, and here we make a very big mistake uh, in our communication instead we need to think on the lines which channel does suit my purpose the best what channel will be preferred by the audience and hence channel selection uh, will also depend on the type of communication is it an argument is it an appeal is it a message uh, which is personal or professional so based on these questions we can choose what is the most important com communication channel now there are certain intrinsic and extrinsic barriers that can be a hindrance to your communication it can be the environment it can be interpersonal uh, problems or it can be personal biases so uh, let's take for let's take uh, into consideration the environment uh, so if my audience is is in a very noisy environment let's say if a political speaker is giving a speech in a market then probably the noise might will distract the audience right uh, then uh, coming to light uh, if it is too dim or if it is too bright uh, then the audience may feel uncomfortable the time of the day when you are uh, that when you are trying to communicate across uh, countries or across continents then time of the day also becomes important so these can be a hindrance to your communication coming on to uh, interpersonal problems so if there is hostility so audience has some grudge against you imagine a professor addressing the class after uh, he failed 50% of the class students are not going to listen to him because they already have a hostile they are hostile towards the professor and hence even if the professor is trying his best to communicate uh, to the students they are not going to listen to him because uh, they have uh, an inherent grudge against him second is power struggles so as students i'm pretty sure you would have tried to extend a few deadlines by requesting your professor but uh, over here you do not wield any power uh, over the professor per se and hence uh, comes the issue of hierarchy now when the hierarchy kicks in it becomes difficult to uh, address the audience because the audience is not ready to listen to you or you do not have any power over their actions and hence it and hence this can become an uh, uh, an extrinsic barrier that can be a hindrance to your communication third is cultural and linguistic factor so all of a sudden i st start speaking in gujarati or french uh, a language probably not everyone is comfortable with uh, that uh, that can have be a hindrance to our communication because uh, essentially i am not able to get the purpose of my communication across to you the third is personal trustworthiness so what are the credentials of the speaker is he qualified to speak about the same so if there is a in mistrust between the audience between the audience and the speaker then this creates a trustworthiness issue which is an intrinsic barrier of the speaker and the audience the second thing is uh, ethical issues in the personal front on the personal front so if a speaker comes over here and speaks uh, something that is against your moral values then probably you might not be interested in uh, listening to the speaker anymore because uh, and this if this is continued over time then probably it creates a drift between the speaker and the audience and essentially that will result in the audience losing uh, interest in the speaker's talk so what can be done to overcome these barriers uh, so that your purpose of communication is clearly communicated to the audience the first thing is be factually correct always ensure that you have the right number so that you, you so that your credibility is established nobody can question you on the data that you have never fake in case you do not know anything during a communication then be clear and speak about it don't try to fake that you know everything that doesn't work when you are trying to communicate and and essentially it will reduce the trustworthiness quotient uh, the next thing is understand the topic prom comprehensively when you are communicating about something to someone or you are presenting something to someone then it becomes very important that you, that you know what you are talking about uh, if during communication it turns out that you are not able to communicate your ideas properly then one of the main reason uh, that might be is that you do not understand the topic properly and the most important of all understand your audience because uh, if you understand your audience then automatically all the interpersonal conflicts are thrown out of the window 
secondly if you understand your audience uh, then you will also be understanding the environment of the audience and that will also help us reduce the remove the environmental prospect uh, uh, barriers so moving on uh, we will start with presentation uh, design and delivery aspect this is one of the most important part of the uh, presentation today and let me start with the quote any guesses on who wrote this quote i hate the way people use presentations instead of thinking people would confront a problem by creating a presentation i wanted them to engage rather than show a bunch of slides you can type it quickly in the chat if you want okay so it has been written by steve jobs it's funny that i am using a ppt to convey this idea but don't get me wrong over here using powerpoints is not bad but overusing it instead of thinking out the out the problem in the first place is bad presentations are a tool for presenting not thinking so too much reliance on presentations can saturate the audience hence the key to a good presentation is simplicity sorry to the uh, is simplicity so the result this results in the audience being unable to focus at any point and eventually loses track if the speaker is too reliant on the ppt and if there are a lot of things that are written in the ppt then uh, then the audience is confused where to focus on the ppt or on the or whether uh, on what the speaker is speaking talking about so we'll be delving into the final aspects of making a presentation in the upcoming slides so coming to the most important thing that we need to realize before making a presentation is that the attention span of audience is too less you can not bombard them with so much information that they lose track of it eventually and hence uh, we will be uh, first of all we will be discussing what are the key reasons why the attention span of the audience reduces the first thing is distraction uh, distraction includes external factors uh, like the environment that we discussed earlier second is lighting conditions which again form a part of the environmental barriers the third is slides are incomprehensible so when i say slides are incomprehensible is that if you look at the slide currently it it clearly indicates what we are talking about we are talking about uh, the attention attention span of the audience why we are talking about it is it is because it is it is less and what are the basic problems that we that one can face when they are uh, talking to uh, an audience so uh, next uh, distraction or, or a barrier to the attention span may be the audience is talking texting dozing off which many of you might be doing right now as well but since it is virtual we are not able to uh, we are not able to recognize these problems and uh, this is one of the main problems that has occurred after the uh, after things have gone virtual and we will be talking about it shortly how to overcome this the third uh, barrier to attention span is the speaker himself or herself so if the speaker says unnecessary fillers like right after every sentence right so uh, if i am talking like this right so and over here you realize that if i speak the word right again and again again and again again and again then probably you will lose your interest and you will start making jokes about it and hence this your attention span will shift from what the speaker is speaking about and it will shift to your personal communication the second is exaggerated gestures uh, uh, so let's say i'm moving my hands about a lot and i'm uh, and basically i'm acting as if i'm a magician on stage over here the since i am exaggerating a lot this the audience is busy trying to focus on my movement rather than what i'm speaking or on the presentation itself hence again the uh, the focus shifts from the speaker or or the topic or the purpose of the communication to the movement of the communicator repetition of phrases so uh, as i mentioned repetition of phrases like speaking the same word again and again so hence uh, we move on to the next most important thing uh, how to avoid this so the halo effect basically says 
that the audience already has a perception about the speaker that is going to come on stage so the audience is already aware of the communicator and the kind of perception that the audience has about the communicator accordingly the audience will accept the communication in the first place and why is that so imagine if a steve jobs or bill gates was going to go on stage even before he is on stage you are ready to accept what he is going to say because you have a perception that the person uh, that uh, that the person is technologically sound he knows what he is talking about uh, so that happens the same with any big ceo satya narela or sundar pichai even before they say a word audience is already ready to believe trust and applaud them so this is an example of the halo effect the audience has made an analysis of the person beforehand they know that the person coming on stage is a distinguished speaker and they already trust him this results in the audience attention as well as focus because if you are ready to accept the communication you are going to pay more attention to the communication in the first place so my suggestion over here to any communicator or any of you right now is that before you go into a presentation ensure that you have your credentials in place ensure that the audience knows whom they are going to hear ensure that they are aware and uh, they are aware that you already know about the topic and you know what you are speaking about a reverse halo effect can be very detrimental to a speaker imagine a union leader speaking uh, addressing the company leadership now by default the image of a union leader is that of a person against the company and hence uh, if the leadership is going to listen to the union leader they already have a negative bias against the leader in the first place and hence even if the union leader is going to communicate something that is very important to the company the leadership might not be able to understand the purpose of his communication because of this coming on to uh, what if you have any kind of uh, disruptions in the communication so let's say right now somebody scribbled on my screen uh, that happened a few minutes ago so you do not point that person out right you you try to figure out so you hear them out and you make peace with it uh, so that will happen even verbally during communication if there is a disagreement with an audience mem- member then if he is right then acknowledge him and say that you will be taking it up after the after the presentation or you can answer him there and there but if the disagreement goes on then it is better to put, push it to the end of the presentation because there are other audience members that are also waiting for the say, for your communication if it's uh, if the disagreement is a negative disagreement and you do not uh, and it's not important to your presentation then ensure that the audience member is aware that whatever he is speaking is not exactly the purpose of your communication and hence over here it is very important that you yourself know your purpose next is about interruptions so uh, all of a sudden someone unmutes themselves during a virtual uh, uh, interaction or let's say somebody stands up and starts shouting in the auditorium then first of all you request them to stay silent because it's not important right now and even if they continue then you need to ask them to take it up offline that is after the presentation when everyone else has gone away because uh, for one audience member you cannot waste time of the other audience members the third important thing is arguments so arguments do happen when you are discussing something with the audience so uh, ensure that e- so one should know that e- each person is entitled to their own opinion and having opinions is not a bad thing but if you are having an opinion and if you are going to and as an audience member you also need to understand that if you are going to bring it up during a presentation then that essentially wastes time of the communicator as well as the audience so try to avoid arguments as an audience member and as a communicator try to see that uh, those arguments do not rise up in the first place and if they do then acknowledge and move on so let's come to the openings so openings need to captivate the audience that's the general rule because as we all saw earlier that uh, audiences do not have a lot of uh, attention span so uh, if you remember then at the start of the session i asked you what was what were your expectations from this although nobody answered but that is an inter- that is a good strategy to follow 
to ensure that the that you know your audience better as a communicator try to engage with the audience prior to the beginning of the communication for the very same reason this helps you get an idea of what are the assumptions that the audience is having in their minds and how you can either answer them during the presentation or make them understand the actual purpose so as to drive home uh, the purpose of your communication later on in the presentation so now we'll be going through the six steps of uh, presentation planning uh, if so the first step is generate ideas and take notes so the reason so all of these points are pretty self explanatory i'll be running you through all of them uh, if you have any questions we can take them up at the later in the q and a session uh, second is creating a presentation plan by plan it generally means uh, a pen and paper plan which we will be discussing later on then you plan your slides and medias then you prepare those slides and medias uh, followed by editing the presentation and then practice practice and practice this is the last step is the most important step of any presentation so some of the key aspects of presenting the voice voice is one of the key aspects of delivering a good presentation it is extremely difficult to capture the audience attention in a monotonous uh, voice so we all have faces at certain at one time or the other if the person is not modulating their voice then probably you lose their interest if i keep on going saying it is extremely difficult to capture the audience attention in a monotonous voice people will definitely go to see you i'm sure many of you might have faces and many have been in lectures now when i'm saying like this it's the same tone it's the same pitch it's the same speed and over here you lose the focus you lose the focus of your audience you lose the focus of uh, you yourself might lose your focus at times and hence modulation of voice is very important you need to emphasize certain things you need to you need to be softer at certain times vary these aspects to get the audience uh, sometimes speak very loudly to get everyone's focus and sometimes very soft so that everyone needs to actually focus to understand what you're speaking about so this keeps the process interactive for the audience and yeah so moving on to the next most important thing uh, the non verbal communication so non verbal cues are uh, the expressions the eye contact that you have how you move your hand how do you sit stand uh, and your grooming and clothing also form a very important part of the non verbal communication ensure that you are trimmed well trimmed and well groomed formals are always a plus but i would suggest that uh, choose your clothing according to the event there are certain events where although you will be communicating or giving a presentation but formals is not the right uh, uh, dress that you might want to choose this means that whatever message you send across the uh, so yeah uh, next thing is about uh, sorry uh, mirroring uh, so what is audience mirroring essentially audience mirroring means that if you are uh, if the speaker as a communicator if you have uh, a certain posture and if you are reflecting a certain energy then the audience will automatically reflect the same energy if i'm sitting like this slumped and keep on going speaking like uh, yeah 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 okay 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 then automatically the audience will not be interested in listening to me and they also will become and they also will uh, have the same energy level as that of me but if i'm standing uh, upright or sitting properly and speaking confidently then the audience will also sit up and listen and if you do not do that then you know the rest you will lose the connect and automatically the purpose of your communication will fail next most important thing and this is uh, one of the key uh, suggestions that uh, comes up again and again in any presentation making uh, strategy is of storytelling so storytelling uh, essentially means that the slide should make a coherent story uh, to cover it in brief when you are presenting the presentation it should flow like a story so each so uh, it has a start it has the end and then it has the body so the flow should be such that it feels that uh, it's going uh, in a smooth manner if there are if all of a sudden there are changes in the topic uh, the audience loses the interest basically so uh, when the audience actually looks through a presentation then the audience should be able to connect the dots 
so if you remember the why who and how then i uh, then if you then if you could connect the dots the uh, when i introduce why and then why introduce who i connected who with why how uh, knowing your audience is important for understand for communicating the purpose again when we discussed how we also connected it with why and who how choosing the channel is important for understanding uh, for understanding the audience uh, and as well as communicating the purpose of your communication so making a story line uh, you you usually sit with a pen and paper and jot down your ideas before you actually start making the presentation but after some time you can automatically start doing it in the powerpoint software as well but uh, it takes a lot of practice and these days a lot of digital tools are also available for story writing uh, the next important thing is a so what concept so it was introduced by mckinsey uh, basically the concept means that at every point for every element that you add in the presentation be it an image infographic design text uh, etc you ask the question so what if there is no answer that means the element isn't adding any value to the presentation and should be removed so let's take for example this is the table so what the table essentially doesn't answer any question for me it doesn't help me understand any concept in this presentation and hence it should be removed coming to the, uh, the closings of the audience uh, of the presentation at the end of the presentation leave the audience with a brief review of the point you more you want them to remember a visual can be used for the purpose because people remember images better than the text but it is not always feasible and hence it's a very subjective decision most importantly never overshoot the time speaking past the scheduled end of a presentation is a violation of the contract that you had with your audience before the presentation you told them we will be discussing for 30 minutes 45 minutes one hour but at the end of the at the end of the presentation you have overshot by let's say 20 minutes this essentially means that without the permission of the audience you took more time from their calendar and hence this should always be avoided because this reduces your credibility for the next communication that you might have with the same audience now we will come to the designing a presentation part so designing the key point is for designing a presentation is to have a standard color scheme if you have noticed in this presentation that i have today the standard color scheme is based on the color blue so it will have colors like black white because they those are the two standard colors any presentation will have and then it has all different shades of blue uh, next important thing is avoid smart art if you uh, any of you has experience of using microsoft powerpoint then you have you know about the feature uh, that is uh, the smart art feature that powerpoint gives i would suggest avoid it try to create your own smart art templates because uh, the inbuilt templates take up a lot of space and they might not suit the purpose exactly instead if you create your own templates then you also get an uh, then you also get an idea about how exactly do you want to present it to your audience use pictures and graphs uh, this is always a good suggestion although you need to understand what is the audience that you are communicating to so again pictures and graphs should be used subjectively most important thing that even i do myself study other presentations and its elements so there are a lot of good presentations that are available out there which have been uh, published by great communicators so mr ratan tata or uh, the ceo of softbank all of them have certain presentations that they uh, upload in the public domain so try to understand the reason behind the elements of that presentation try to understand why that person put in that element in the first place and hence that will give you an idea how to design your own presentation important thing of having a presentation is give the agenda of the presentation beforehand this helps establish the storyline in the first place and secondly uh, the audience can keep a track where exactly you are in the presentation uh, as uh, if you remember uh, prior to starting the presentation i gave you the agenda that we will be discussing the planning communication planning presentation design and delivery and uh, verbal etiquette followed by question and answers so give the agenda beforehand so the four major elements of a slide are the action title body key takeaway and the photo we'll be discussing each of them individually so the first one is the body of the sorry is the title so if you look at the top space this uh, this space is for sending a message across to the audience 
So this is one of the most premium properties on any slide. This is one place where the audience is going to read invariably. You want to write the most important takeaway of your slide at this position. Another important thing of understanding uh, of doing this is that one slide should have only one message. If you're trying to clutter the slide with too many messages going across, then the audience will tend to lose your focus and uh, they, and you might not be able to communicate your purpose correctly. Uh, also having a one message per slide helps you summarize easily in the end. The title should create a story and uh, the title builds on the body of the slide, not the other way around. So this part is the body, uh, that is the bulleted points. Now through the bulleted points, I want to convey a specific message and, and hence the title builds on the body rather than the other way around. So if you observe this triangle, then uh, research says that a person's reading habit on any screen follows this pattern. They will read the first line completely, first two, three lines completely. Then the attention span reduces as we move from top right to bottom left corner. And hence you want to uh, position the most important parts of your presentation or your slide in this particular triangle. It's not that uh, the other part is not read, but it is, it has been observed that this is the part which is read a little bit more as compared to the other triangle. So again, as we discussed, the body provides an analysis of the key message that is conveyed through the title. So the body should have charts and text and tables as we discussed earlier. The most important part of a body is to provide clear analysis. So the body should conclude in a comprehensible takeaway. So takeaway is this blue little uh, box that we have over here for to write down. So what is the importance of a takeaway box? So the takeaway box concludes in a comprehensible understanding and continues the story. This, it is essentially a summary of the analysis and uh, it should lead to the next slide. Uh, the fourth important element is the footers. Although I haven't used any footers in uh, all of these slides, but the footers are generally used to mention sources, assumptions or calculations, page numbers, logos or company information, etc. So footers generally go below the key takeaway, key takeaway uh, part of the slide. So if we take a look, basically slides need to have four qualities, simplicity, relevance, readability and clarity. Uh, all of these are very self-explanatory. Uh, simplicity means that uh, the slide should be simple to comprehend. Uh, it should not be too cluttered. Clarity means that uh, the purpose of the communication should be clearly uh, showcased in each and every slide. The audience should be able to understand why that slide exists in the first place. Relevance is again, uh, as I mentioned, were up the importance of the slide in a particular position in the deck. And readability uh, means that you need to have the you need to have objects that are easily uh, understandable by the audience. We will now move on to virtual etiquette. Uh, reasons for uh, taking this topic up are very obvious. Uh, after COVID, most of the communication has become virtual. Work from home, study from home are the concepts that are going on, and hence communicating virtually is very important. And all of us falter a lot in this aspect. So a few tips of what we can do before the presentation. Uh, one is the devices, keep backups ready, be it microphones, be it uh, webcams, be, be it laptops or tablets, ensure that you have a backup device ready for you just in case one device fails just before the communication begins. Second is get ready. Always uh, have your slide in the presentation mode, ensure that you are able to see, uh, you are able to see the slides clearly. Uh, and ensure that the slides are in such a way that they, they are uh, they are visible to the audience as well. So by visible, I mean ensure that the font sizes on the screen are not on your screen are not such that the audience cannot see it. Many many audience will be joining through mobile phones uh, or tablets which have a smaller screen, and hence ensure that the font size that you choose are visible over those devices as well. Uh, audio and video chat check. So even the Git's technical staff will be able to uh, back me up on this. Uh, at 10 a.m. today, we did an audio and video check just to ensure that the uh, that the interface was working properly. So even though I have been using Zoom for the last uh, six months, 
but before this presentation audio and video check is very important backup so inform the audience about plan b in case uh, of a technical failure in case of an electricity failure in case of an internet issue what is it that the audience needs to do it shouldn't be uh, that the audience is left in the dark while the communicator is trying to get the systems back up so uh, inform the audience about plan b uh, about food so uh, before the presentation food should be kept light uh, avoid caffeinated drinks uh, the reason being caffeine uh, will add a lot of pump and during your virtual presentation you need to be very subtle as compared to face to face conversations because over the screen people will not be able to comprehend comprehend you very clearly so now understanding what you should be do, what you should be doing during the presentation first is emotion think on your feet keep your emotions in check most important thing so if uh, i will take the example of, of this uh, once again so suddenly someone starts scribbling on my on the screen then uh, i instead of trying to figure out uh, what's happening i simply will uh, see what are the options available to me and i'll stop uh, the participants annotation right so that is thinking on your feet uh, keep your emotions in check questions will be thrown out to you and uh, uh, if you are not well versed or if you do not know certain things then it might happen that uh, you you might falter over here it is very important that you show that you are confident to the audience and you take some time to think about it and then answer it's okay to take time rather than becoming nervous and not being able to answer at all connectivity so bad connections uh, do exist and uh, the best way to uh, do that is that inform beforehand that you are joining from a weak internet connection so that in case there is any problem then uh, so there might be a problem in the future so try shifting to a better location uh, before the presentation i would say but even if during the presentation you feel that the connectivity is an issue then feel free to uh, change your position and ask the audience to wait for a few seconds uh, audience so uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, virtual uh, communication one of the most important thing is it is very difficult to judge the audience and hence uh, you need to ensure that you know the audience beforehand the next uh, is behavior so in virtual communication modulating your voice becomes very important you need to uh, have more pitches more tones uh, than your normal communication that is uh, the reason behind this is that over virtual uh, virtual media you are not able to get your voice across very clearly the voice may break at times the voice just suddenly goes on mute which might be happening with a lot today as well so uh, ensure that your voice is modulating properly and finally stay calm and composed so summarizing what all we discussed today in the first part we discussed the why who and how of communication we understood the importance of purpose audience and the channel during communication we also looked at the potential barriers to communication and the solutions talking about the presentation delivery we saw how the attention span of the audience is very low and how we can ensure that the attention uh, stays and the audience stays focused we discussed the six step process that harvard prescribes and then we discussed some subtle aspects of delivering a good presentation we also discussed the opening and closing strategies of the presentation delivery moving on we discussed the design aspect of presentation and how it and how these four are the most important components of any presentation that is simplicity relevancy clarity and readability so this helps us the de design a presentation such that we can deliver maximum impact we finally discussed the problems and challenges in virtual communication and what could be done for avoiding those with that i open the floor to questions and uh, yeah yeah mr abin i think uh, it was a nice presentation because i was also looking on all these slides what you have made oh, really it was a it was a remarkable one and uh, if somebody because in nowadays the time has come where we have to think uh, virtually uh, in the point of view of, of the orator orator point of view right when we are presenting anything in front of the audience 
or when they are virtual audience so we are not knowing that what basically the audience it is all about so we have to be technically as well as uh, uh, content point of view we have to be very sharp so definitely the point which you have raised and uh, the way of presentation which we have to uh, keep on moving in the in the flow i think it is really a remarkable one and definitely our students uh, knew something great today from you and most of the student are from mba final year so they are at a same pace where you are today now so i think uh, uh, they also will know that where they have the need of improvement and how they can improve their skill by which they can also become a expert speaker in another colleges like you right what you are doing so it is really great uh, nice knowing the way how we can present uh, or how we can communicate well well by presentation because when we are selling something selling any kind of product or when we are going for any kind of uh, presentation at a senior leadership level so these kind of skills require it's it's required by from everybody or everybody has to follow these kind of steps what you have, what you have mentioned so i think it will be a great learning for all all of us and uh, with this now i would like to invite all the audience to ask anything what they have in their mind or uh, because the expert in with you and uh, he is keen to deliver this kind of expert talk and you will not believe the reference of mr abhin i have got from one of our senior colleague from gitanjali medical that is gmhr rajiv pandya sir or he has also joined this talk in between that uh, in the mid of it so he has given a reference that he is one of the nice speaker and i think we have to invite so for me abhin is also one of the student so definitely uh, uh, we have as a as a teacher as well as you all as a student have learned something new knowledge which might be you were not aware about it so really great to see you abin and i think it was a great session we can tell and uh, we have done the recording for the same so the student who has missed that opportunity today because in our engineering we have the practical exam virtually today happenings so many of the student they want to join but they could not join because of this uh, another commitment of the rtu so we will also circulate this whole video to all those guys so that they can also learn what today you have the learning what you have given today in this forum so i think we have got one question from the student yeah. i have query that what's most important etiquettes with virtual communication what kind of etiquettes uh, the the expert or the orator or the communicator or the speaker has to uh no when they are communicating virtually with the audience it's a very nice question i think abin will be the right person to give the answer for the same yes yeah i mean sure uh so uh, if you ask me what is the most important etiquette then i would say that the most important thing is to be ready so uh, when i say be ready it terms in uh, it essentially means be ready with the purpose of the communication be ready with the slide deck that you are going to prepare be ready for any type of questions that might come up and be ready for uh, for any uh, problems that might occur during the presentation so uh, being ready uh, in virtual setup is the most important thing and uh, the and uh, most importantly uh, you need to be presentable when you are uh, talking virtually so during your virtual interaction you know that uh, mostly it's just the shoulders and your face that are going to be uh, seen above the camera so over here ensure that you are in a silent environment you are uh, there, there are no interruptions that might occur during the presentation and you are and you are ready for any kind of uh, problem that might occur later on yeah okay answer the question yeah yeah definitely i think he has got the answer and uh, Uh, in the virtual communication i will also add one point because your the way of uh, presenting in front of the audience plays a very important role we cannot judge how we are uh, presenting how is the hand movement how we are uh, 
giving the i expressions to the audience so that also plays a very important role when we are virtually communicating with the audience so uh, we have to know that etiquettes also sometimes the dressing sense also matters a lot uh, because uh, everybody expert uh, everybody expect anything uh, formal kind of uh, the way of dressing sense from the expert so that also plays a very important role one more question which has come from our uh, cdc team member shailja ma'am she is our communication trainer are there any guideline for color selection for ppts particularly because some prefer dark layouts how could we customize choose color of sli slides for a different audiences very nice question we have got from the audience side yeah uh, hello ma'am so uh, i'll answer it in two parts uh, first of all guidelines for color selection so ppts so generally there are a set of color palettes that are available uh, to the audience uh, to the communi uh, communicator so if you go to the powerpoint uh, or the google slides or whatever software you use then by default there are certain color palettes which are already available so they might range from neon to gray scale so depending on your choice and your audience you can cho choose from them if you are not if you do not like those palettes that are already available to you then probably you might you can go to uh, the internet and look for color palettes so these color palettes are organized in such a way that uh, they have uh, one color uh, and then uh, the palettes are designed from dark to light or complementary colors so uh, i generally follow the two types of palettes if i have to make a presentation which has a lot of colors then uh, i follow red yellow blue green purple white black or if i have to make a presentation like this one which has only one color throughout the presentation then i will follow the dark to light palette so dark to light palette essentially means you choose one base color and then uh, you start reducing the uh, start uh, introducing white or black uh, so uh, you can actually google uh, these palettes up instead of designing the palettes yourself uh, there are color keywords available which you can directly put it into the software and they will give you the color palettes automatically right uh, secondly uh, how could we customize or choose color slides for different audiences so i already answered how to customize the colors uh, how to base them on for different audiences uh, and also uh, about dark layouts okay so usually i follow a style where i prepare lighter lighter uh, presentations the reason being light presentations work on all the screens so even if it is a small mobile screen or a laptop screen or even if you are presenting it from a projector on a large uh, 56 inch or 60 inch tv or a large uh, white background so light backgrounds always work in those settings whereas for darker uh, layouts it might happen that due to the brightness of different devices the darker uh, layouts do not uh, load properly or look proper in different devices and hence i tend to avoid the darker layouts choosing the colors for different audiences uh, it depends on the type of audience again if you are presenting to the board you want to keep it subtle you do not want a lot of funky neon colors uh, or a lot of uh, uh, or you uh, or let's say a very bright color palette uh, so generally if i am making a board kind of presentation then i would make a presentation which has a uh, soft pastel colors or it would be on a gray scale uh, format if i am presenting it to uh, an audience where i need to capture the attention where the audience uh, uh, attention span is very less so as a professor if you are presenting to students or as a speaker if you are presenting to an audience then probably you want to choose a color palette which is bright but again not so bright that uh, it it is distracting so this is a kind of uh, palette that you can see uh, right now is one that i would choose the third is if you are making a funny presentation so at times you want to have uh, an element of humor or an element of show in your presentations where you can choose neon colors very bright colors so that's okay but uh, try to avoid those kind of presentations and they are very uh, specific to a particular uh, event <laughs> Thank you.
I hope that answers your question, ma'am. Any other questions? Hello. Yes, uh, sorry, I got um, muted, or no that is the issue. Uh, no, no doubt we have got the answer. Or uh, really nice of you. I mean, I I think Rajiv sir is also uh, joined us. I think he might be hearing me. Rajiv sir, um, I think we have also unmuted you. So we also want that you also talk to our student for a for a minute or two minutes so that it will be also motivating for all of us. If if you can hear us. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Arvind. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Abhin. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Whosoever has joined in this uh, webinar, uh, first of all, uh, I welcome Mr. Abhin to this platform and uh, giving his valuable inputs for the uh, presentation skills and all. Uh, being a part of HR, I would like to suggest to my all participants that there are four things if you are doing in pre presentation. And you are working in a corporate organization. Then there are four things which are very much important for individual to learn. That is, first is communication. Second is documentation. Third one is documentation of communication. And fourth one is communication of documentation. It is very much important to have walk the talk. Many people I have seen in the corporate houses uh, who are only, you know, sitting in their cabins and they are just coming with an excuse, excuses that, sir, I have already uh, verbally passed on the instructions to somebody for to complete the some of the tasks. But sometimes along with the communication, documentation is very important and people are avoiding uh, emails or presentations or any kind of written doc, uh, documentation with anybody in the corporate with this uh, there is important communication of documentation once you have done the docu documentation then also it is important sometimes what is happening people are uh, uh, sometimes uh, people are not com communicating once they have done the communications and the leadership team which is working for the organization is is not having much time to uh, see to go through the mails and everything and the things get linger on and uh, finally it, get, it gets chaos. So communication of document is equally important. And fourth one is documentation of communication. Once you have done the communication with your superiors, with your, with your colleagues, with your bosses, with your uh, top line, then it is very much important to have documentation of it that at what time, by what time you have discussed the thing and what decision, what strategic decisions have been taken at the same time. So this is my uh, simple funda of the uh, management which I wanted to convey with my all of the students. I have one question with uh, Mr. Abhin. Hey, Abhin, uh, there are many students coming to me. They are saying that, sir, uh, what out of the box strategies IIM people have adopted to teach their students. So we are also running our course MBA uh, in Gates and uh, engineering uh, uh, also in many five or six branches. So how you are different than the other institutes of the country? Can you please elaborate on this part? It's a, it's a very nice question, which we wanted to ask. Rajiv sir has asked, that is really great of us. <laughs> yeah, Abhin, I would sure. like to hear from you. Sure, sure. Uh, so basically, if uh, there's a differentiator of IMA from other uh, B schools, one is that uh, it gives a practical exam, uh, experience of everything that we discussed theoretically. 
so uh, according to our previous discussion as well uh, if we are studying an hr topic so let's say we are studying negotiations which is a very important organizational behavior uh, concept then in class activity for actually uh, so in class activity to understand uh, how negotiations actually work when each person takes a role of uh, party a and party b and the both the parties have to negotiate for uh, on a certain uh, topic right so uh, if uh, the, so different scenarios can be played out over here party a can be fed with a different kind of information party b can be fed with a different kind of information uh, and then both both of them try to negotiate which actually happens in the real world a supplier and a, a buyer will have two different types of information available with them and then they try to negotiate for the same price so that is one thing second is uh, the kind of core structure and the course curriculum so having different kinds of faculties for various subjects uh, it essentially gives us a lot of variety of subjects that we can take and the variety uh, basically means that we can actually specialize or uh, uh, specialize or look for subjects which are of our interest so that is the, the one of the second most important thing one more thing would be the uh, industry relations that ima has developed over the years so there are various uh, clubs and uh, student interest groups uh, that are present within the campus which improve the industry relations so the, as uh, i am a speaker over here today so similarly uh, various other speakers come to ima which uh, which give knowledge about the various industries the best practices uh, how can how can you so recently we had a speaker session on how to manage leadership during the so etc etc so having those industry relations uh, helps the institute a lot so yeah i would say these are the three most important things that, that uh, would differentiate i am angle for me yeah abin uh, thank you so much uh, for answering this i have another question with you uh, that is there any specific study conducted uh, from the im student side that on post covid scenario uh, what will be the scenario of uh, industrialist and what will be the future of students post covid specifically uh, i am not sure whether uh, industry uh, specific study has been conducted by im amdavad yet it might be happening uh, because uh, there are a lot of professors working on a lot of different things at the same time uh, but uh, there was one study which uh, was done by an iim professor along with a student a phd student of iit delhi to understand what will be the impact if uh, campuses are reopened post covid so uh, that was one uh, quantitative study that was done apart from that and it is available in the public domain as well you can uh, search for it uh it was covered by a lot of newspapers so yeah that is all that i'm aware of currently so uh, do you agree with the statement that covid 19 has uh, uh, come up with a bundle of opportunities for india and uh, pm's initiative for the atmanirbhar bharat will help us to grow further and to become uh, economically strong in coming future time okay so i will be answering this uh, from a management student perspective as a future manager uh, if we look at any uh, calamity i would say and uh, sorry i put that wrong not exactly calamity but any opportunity so opportunity disaster, disaster or uh, pandemic you can say uh, not exactly pandemic but any crisis i would say Uh, so a uh, beat economical beat healthcare sector any kind of crisis that occurs that creates an opportunity so it might not create an opportunity in the quintessential sense uh, that is the businesses which are already existing but it might create opportunity somewhere else so with uh, covid 19 the atmanirbhar uh, concept is basically of localization so this concept was already followed uh, in the state of kerala uh, as per my knowledge so they have this uh, they have a very cl- close system that is tight very uh, tightly knit so community service is the community member that is the concept over here so if we have a localization uh, uh, concept that comes up in india 
and we reduce the imports then first of all economically the country will benefit because we have a large uh, uh, this balance in the export and imports secondly it will create a lot of, a lot of opportunities for uh, various other for various uh, people within india so be it in the service sector be it in the manufacturing sector there are a lot of opportunities that will come up if you ask me what are the specific sectors that i see personally which will rise up one is edtech and uh, educational tech uh, edtech has improved a lot uh, byju recently acquired white hat junior byju has been expanding and it has already been become a tech billion uh, startup uh, secondly the other is manufacturing of masks and sanitizers so masks and sanitizers will become a thing a common thing now it is as good as taking your water bottle along with you and hence this is one manufacturing sector which sees a lot of scope the third is e-commerce so e-commerce has seen a lot of rise uh, be it fmcg products so flipkart amazon be it book delivery again yeah. the same names geomart came up during the pandemic and it has been doing good uh, be it grocery delivery big basket grocers etc are on the rise and there are different kind of business models that are coming up in the e-commerce sector to uh, cater to the needs of the people right now even e-pharmacy is coming up these days uh then i would say uh, tech side anything that is related to it development services or con- it consultancy that is helping uh, people establish uh, uh, technical uh, people uh, ha- helping uh, organization establish uh, technology within the organization so sap platforms or uh, hrm services uh, would are also on the rise because of the whole work from home situation uh, so yeah these are a few things that uh, come to my mind okay thank you abin thank you so much arvind ji my uh, question session is over now you i'm handing <laughs> it over to you thanks a lot sir thank you very much definitely it was uh, some more new learnings by the expert rajiv pandya sir is just like my big brother or uh, one of my good friend elder brother we can say and many of the hr practices and the hr learning i have, I have learned from him so thanks a lot so thank you jo- for joining us today in this uh, webinar and i must say because uh, we are organizing these kind of expert talk from almost uh, when we uh, the lockdown started and the virtual mode came into picture or it is it is i think it is on 20th or 25th of the expert talk right but i must say because i've been is a student and uh, but the way he presented today it is more than expert so really it was a, a superb discussions what we have today and i think all student of our mba who is already uh, seeing this talk they also have to get motivated so that when they are going out they have to go with the name of the gitanjali so they also have to get the invite from other, another colleges as an expert like we have invited today have been no doubt he is a student but he has a good knowledge and the content and he is definitely working for the same so with this uh, i also want to like uh, like to add one more thing that uh, this whole event started on time ending on time or with the good number of student still staying till the end so that is the good uh, about this whole webinar and with this i again thank abin for joining us today we have of gitanjali institute of technical history department of management studies and rajiv pandya sir also for giving us this opportunity to host abin so with this i thanks to all thanks to the audience thanks for listening patiently and with this thanks to everybody thank, thank you abin thank you, thank you uh, rajiv sir for inviting me over here and to arvind sir for organizing this thank you so much thank you thanks a lot